is something, this place is something like a miracle, like it puts on this big facade, like the place is good and it looks nice and, and everybody lives decent. And, but it really, it, it, it really shows like once you get into, you know, diagnosing what you, what you got yourself into, right? And the closer you get to it, you can see how it's kind of dark and beat up and like, damn, I didn't know it was like that. You know, when you look from a distance, from a way they put it at you, you think of it as one way. And then once you begin to say, I want to be a part of that. I want to see that. I want to see how that works. And then as you get closer to it, you begin to say, Ugh, what is going on around here? You know what I mean? And then you begin to really look at what's going on. Can you see inside of there? Yeah. The top of the place is falling apart. The bottom of the place is falling apart. Never even said anything. Like this place done burnt all the way down. Like damn, this building rightfully can't even hold itself. It's about to damn fall in, fall apart. Rightfully it doesn't fill in and fill apart. But it's real sad, man. You you think, you know, they come, they say come here and enjoy life and this the land of the free, home of the brave. But they bring us here and they make us into their little puppy dogs. They turn us into uh, something that we didn't think we wanted to be greedy, um, like really not caring, you know, like America the beautiful. But rightfully, you, you you just, you're struggling all the time. My story is about the 50th anniversary of the signing of the Civil Rights Act. Um, I'm looking at the cultural impact, what's changed, what has not changed, um, and what's what's yet to be done. All right, Reverend Velasco, thanks so much. Is One thing I want to say. Yeah. So while they were fighting affirmative action, we was looking for affirmative action. Now we got a black man in the highest office that we could ever have. But we got more people incarcerated, young black men, than it was a slave. Yeah. So while we yet came to a, 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 a discrimination release or freedom from discrimination, we came to an all-time high of disparity. That's a definitely definitely a tension there. All right, Reverend Glasgow, thanks so much. That'll be exactly what we need for that story. Thank you so much. Thank you. I hope that we will not be going backwards as we are in the 50th anniversary of the Voting Rights Act and the Civil Rights Act. Looking at discrimination in 2014 that should not even exist. I, I, I hope that we will have a better future for our children than we have now, to where we're going back to fight fights that already have been won. Paul found himself having to preach to a people who had seen great victories in the past, but now they were facing great challenges to those very victories, their victories of faith. And there was an attitude of cynicism lurking amongst the people. It was building, and this attitude said, it's too hard, the forces are too great, Tea Party is too powerful. Oh, excuse me, that's wrong sentence. It's too powerful. It's not political conservatism versus political liberalism. It's not public policy and changes. It's not right versus left. It's sin. Our parents knew that the fight for justice and equal protection under the law and voting rights was a righteous cause. They knew what Isaiah 10 said. Woe unto those who legislate evil and rob the poor of their rights. And I believe that 
that this is what we should say to the world. When they began to ask us over the next days, why did you come to sell? Did you come to celebrate? Hell no. considered an unpopular thing to do by the liberals. Uh, in state after state, Confederate monuments are being removed. Confederate emblems are being taken down. The flag's not allowed to be flown anymore. And, you know, they're, they're, they're taking away the history of the South and what they fought for. And, I don't know, I just think in another 50 years, if this continues, you won't see anything, you know, that you can point to and educate children to. This is the way it was, this was our flag, this was our capital, this was the heroes on these statues, you know, they'll be gone. And, and that's, uh, you know, the price we pay for allowing uh, our system to become so liberalized. Ideas, one dressing up like clowns or throwing glitter at them, or uh, you know, the, the biggest response really was to ignore it, and that was the response from the traditional leadership in Rome: was just don't do anything, don't give them the attention. And while I can respect that, as I was watching all the other ideas come up, I became very nervous that it was going to create a vacuum, and that who knows what was going to happen. You know, but the leadership all stepped out. And then a whole bunch of disorganized people with, you know, who knows what kind of intentions they had, that it could be a really ugly scene. And we're watching that happen right now in Stone Mountain, um, where there's a lot of violence and the two groups are clashing, and that's not what we want. My name is Jamie Doss, and I'm the mayor of Rome, Georgia. Here for today. Today uh, there is a neo-Nazi group uh, staging a rally here in Rome. Uh, they do have a permit to be here, but they do not, do not represent the character and spirit of the city of Rome. Our local government works very hard to promote working together. We believe working together works. So it's important that uh, uh, you understand that Rome, Georgia is working hard to reach its potential. And the only way we can reach our potential 
is to embrace our diversity and work together. Thank you. You know, on the other side of the fence before us, we hear a lot of people talking about tolerance. They call us names like racist, bigot. Come to find out, it's actually attracted members that have been. Um, you know, now they're interested because we go there, we socialize. That's how we're going to kind of I, I run to Illinois. We're going to kind of like take it a little bit slow. Y'all ready? Go down there, get some food. Maxwell, we're heading down there. We'll do our thing, behold the fiery cross, and we'll yeah. be doing this, and they, they'll do the Roman salute. Yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. what Jeff was saying. Okay. Okay. We're here because various white nationalists wanted to have a like demonstration at like the site of the second rising of the Ku Klux Klan historically. We wanted to show a, a strong and joy, joyful um, anti-fascist force against the, the Klan, which were prevented from gathering here and the neo-Nazis. And so that's why we're out here today to show a joyful celebration. Yeah, it was out of abundance of caution, uh, given our experience on April 23rd of 2016 when the uh, Klan had a rally out here, the counter protesters showed up and there was a problem, and so we figured that uh, abundance of caution would shut the park down today. Uh, uh, we had denied the Klan permit to rally. They indicated they might show up anyway. Uh, the counter protesters said that they were going to show up, so we felt the prudent thing to do would go ahead and shut the park down. To me, that's anti fascism. It's actually about uh, uh, overcoming obstacles together, creating a shared perception, um, you know, and acting against ethno nationalism, however it occurs, against you know, white supremacy in this organized fashion. Um, that's what real anti-fascism is, I think, actually being able to identify uh, these kind of molecular authoritarian currents, how they develop, how they metastasize into bigger cultural problems, uh, you know, and outpacing them before they're able to do so. Having successfully boxed the fascists out of the streets everywhere, a new generation of anti-racists are beginning to confront authoritarianism throughout the entire society. Yeah. Our terrain of struggle is real life, because the weeds of authoritarianism spread everywhere, 
and because we do not intend to wait for someone else to come to save us, which we know will never happen. The neo-confederates and Nazi fascists have been denied a platform to rally around a significant monument by a serious and determined effort today. Yeah! Yeah! <laughs> park services closed the park after the racist event was closed in order to prevent anti-fascists from celebrating this victory, but this decision is not neutral. Ultimately, we can have a better life if we continue, in all of our efforts, to rely only on ourselves, our communities, our friends, our neighbors, and coworkers. Spread a million seeds, blossom with a million flowers. Flower power does beat fascist power. Yeah! <laughs>